Borida comrades. Okay, um, so, <coughs> you're right, 15 second countdown for this. So I'm commissioning editor for Education for Channel 4. Um, I've been there for two years and um, I came over actually from the BBC and I knew absolutely nothing about education. They got me and Matt Lock in, there's two of us, um, because we were, as television people call us, digital natives. We're not, we learned, you know, midlife, but nevertheless, uh, I have kind of 15 years of doing web stuff, which for a broadcaster is a very, very long time. So they got two of us in to basically completely radicalise what we do for education. Has that stopped? Um, games teach. They do. I d I'm not going to tell you how, because if you just Google it, there is uh, a staggering amount of data out there that proves that games of all kinds, um, active play, board games, video games, you name it, we learn through play. It's a really basic thing that we do. And to suck the fun out of learning is, frankly, criminal. Um, this is what I learned. One of the things I learned to play on, my mum bought it for me as an educational computer, I was about, uh, I don't actually know, maybe 12. And um, I did absolutely nothing but play games on it. Uh, it gave us Elite, very, very famous. <laughs> <laughs> I never played Elite. I played this, um, Sphinx Adventure. <laughs> and this? Come on. Chucky A. There are some older folks in the room, great. <laughs> How about this one? Night Law. Magic. Took about 45 minutes to load on the tape cassette. <laughs> so uh, it taught me to play games, which taught me a bunch of things that you can just noodle with stuff. So I went to school, um, the kind of school where they like to just get you good grades. And they noticed that I could speak French quite well. So they were like, do languages, do languages. I said, I want to do science, I want to do science. No, no, do languages, do languages. Big fat fight. Ended up doing A-levels with biology, chemistry, French and Italian. Uh, ended up going to a degree in languages, left. Never used it again, not for a second. Went straight into teaching myself how to um, build websites. Basically by viewing source and just copying it. Um, <coughs> this is the second website I built. Uh, helped build. There were four of us. The first ever, Channel4.com, in 1996. And I got that through word of mouth. Somebody looking at a website saying, did you build that? Yes. Do you want a job? OK. And uh, that same year was also the year that the internet kind of got really interesting for me because a game came out called Quake and you could play other humans. Eight at a time. Huge amount of people. And uh, this was me, this was everybody else as well. Everybody was the Space Marine. And I played this game obsessively, compulsively for a very long time. Taught me a lot about networking, literally. Plugs, wires, modems, bits, boards. Uh, I evolved, that's me in Quake 3, uh, that's me in World of Warcraft now. I play a lot of games. <laughs> And basically what happened was at the BBC, I was actually there as an executive producer for software application development and um, I noticed that there were a lot of games being made without much of a kind of direction and uh, kind of jumped in head first to, to really look at, basically take my hobby into work, <laughs> stop that software development stuff, I'm going to actually talk about games at work. So one of the first things we did was um, a national study to see what kind of people play games, I'll talk a bit about this later. But uh, while I was poking around, um, this is a seminal book on the subject. Very simple, written almost for kids. Um, and Raf's primary thing, Raf built Ultima Online and Star Wars Galaxies. And uh, he has a book called Theory of Fun. And at the fundament, if you're not having fun, you're bored. So when kids, when you see teens especially being bored, or kids as well, it's because they're not learning anything new. Now, if you actually said that to them, you're, you're, you're hanging around at the bus stop smoking cigarettes and looking grumpy because you're not learning something, they'll hit you. But um, it's actually true. So uh, there's a bunch of theories out there now that games are not only fun and can teach, but they are actively brain improving, repathing neuron pathways for people with Alzheimer's, um, that they keep you active. Anytime you're learning something new, you're really 
improving yourself. That uh, there's a, there's a lot of talk out there at the moment about how um, reward through mechanism produces dopamine squirts. This is why you see people playing World of Warcraft for such a long time and doing grinding, bizarrely boring-looking uh, quests. It's basically because you have you get rewarded and you get this little squirt of dopamine, which leads us to start asking questions like, right, if something really is genuinely boring, if you reward people at a regular level and level them up at a regular level, can you make you know memorizing things for history more interesting? So there's a thought out there. I don't have the answers yet because this is a just a massive area of interest for the future. Can games create killers? Um, the Daily Mail, I'm sure, thinks yes. <laughs> Uh, most people <coughs> think no, but nevertheless, there's that grand philosophical question, which is, well, if you play violent games on a daily basis, and if you watch violent television, and if you watch violent movies, and if you listen to violent lyrics, are you going to become desensitised to violence? And again, there are more and more studies out there happening about this. If games teach, yes, they can probably teach bad things as much as good things, so we need to be careful about what we teach. Bloody powerful, these machines, not that one. Um, <laughs> They're powerful. So, Channel 4 Education. Our audience are 14 to 19, UK based, so of which are a couple of million. And uh, what our, our remit, Channel 4, if you're not, it's a bit complex, is a public service broadcaster. It has a public service remit, but it's fully commercial in its operations. It pays for itself, in other words. It doesn't take money from government or the licence fee. But we have a remit. Education is a big part of it. Um, the government and the BBC tend to cover curriculum, so we tend to try to uh, complement that with softer learning. Um, again, I'll go into more detail in a bit. Um, Pre-2008, everything that Channel 4 Education did was television. It went out from half past nine to half past twelve in the morning schedule, still is, the last vestiges of it. Uh, and anywhere between 60 grand and 120 grand would buy you an hour's worth of telly and uh, the average audience in the morning would be 100,000 people so for argument's sake 100 grand 100,000 people pound a person um, ha what percentage of those are 14 to 19 well the si sick and the terminally unemployed because most kids are, in, are obviously school college or work so this wasn't working because we were spending six million a year on effectively, even if you want to be generous and say 10% of that 100,000 people were teenagers, that's not enough. So uh, as of 2008, Matt and I took that money and spent it on the internet. Uh, we decided to go where the teens are. So you look at what they're doing, there's plenty of media reports out there, they're on the internet and they're on their phones and the TV is maybe on in the background, except for very small certain parts of the day, Hollyoaks, Big Brother, whatever. Um, they're on the phones. Sometimes they're outside, but <laughs> not that often. So out of that money, we spend about half of it on games, a couple of million, and um, five primary reasons for this. I didn't really have to argue games can teach. Everybody went, yeah, yeah, we kind of get that. Um, let's see what happens because of course you know there is no history of this so we just tore up the TV thing and went out there and said right we're gonna give ourselves three years we're gonna spend the money on internet native products for teenagers and see what works primary reason we went for games apart from the fact that I love them is because uh, we do know categorically that teenagers all of them play games this is mini clips growth chart mini clip is um, a website that, that has mustn't say a rude word, um, simple, kind of, you could describe time wasty. some of them are cool, but generally that, that casual, small flash game, completely huge, tons of time spent there, the vast majority of them are not, uh, don't teach you anything, They're, they are really kind of time wasty things, hugely popular. Um, when you look <coughs> at what people play, uh, there is difference between boys and girls, but no difference in the totals. So all teenage boys play, all teenage girls play. There's always somebody who always knows somebody's cousin who doesn't. But fundamentally, um, take any US data and it, you can assume that it maps to UK, UK data. This is because when uh, we did that BBC research I was talking about, we took three and a half thousand people in the UK 
And to do a national survey, you kind of have to start at a base number of a uh, one and a half thousand, so it, it went well beyond it. And um, our data was kind of the same. This is 2005, so it's gone up since, but 97% of 11 to 15, 97% of 12 to 17, so fundamentally the same. 100% of under 10s. So all teams play games. Um, Depending on how hardcore they are, it's either daily or kind of every other day. Certainly does tend to compete with telly, S play session up to about two hours. Uh, games can teach anything, take your subject. So for the B, maths, English, geography, for us, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Um, just Google randomly learning games and I found, stumbled over this quite quickly. NASA, recogn, rec whatever. <laughs> Um, pick a subject. Henry Jenkins goes beyond that and says, well, yeah, pick a subject, sure. Games teach that failure isn't bad, which is magic. And collaboration isn't cheating, ditto. The fact that failure isn't bad is just so huge. I mean, if you talk to the educational establishment, um, there's a lot of fear out there at the moment that we've, we've just created a system in this country that's all about targets and pass rates not actually about learning anything, not actually about turning people out who are then ready to hit the world and go into the workforce. Um, so th anything that we can do to kind of change on, and help is really, really important. Games of TV time, categorically, uh, the consoles are plugged into the television. So for a television broadcaster, this is, this is, <laughs> this is a game changer. This is serious. Um, Big games like World of Warcraft in America, again, America equals UK. Uh, we are basically American. Um, for in, in households that play World of Warcraft, <coughs> national average in the States for watching telly is 28 hours a week. And uh, in WoW households, it drops to six and a half hours a week. And the game's pay played for 24 hours a week. So direct swap out. So we need to watch it. Um, we're interested because games are still evolving. Television hasn't really evolved much at all in decades. Uh, it, it's, it's turned up on the internet. I mean, really, it just hasn't actually changed that much. Games change annually. The technology changes, the interface changes. This is a screenshot set up naturally but um, of Microsoft's new technology, Natal, which is scheduled to come out in about a year. Uh, it's kind of like the Wii, but without the interface, w without the peripheral. You just jump up and down in front of the telly and it kind of knows what you're doing. So that, that's a grand change. Suddenly you have, you know, oh God, Britain's got talent the game with all the dancing and all of that kind of stuff. Oh. Um, games are also really new business. There are some game formats out there and um, business models that are making a hilarious amount of money. I had this wonderful talk with the guys at RuneScape, JGEX, an unknown, relatively unknown British company, 400 employees based in Cambridge. Two guys from Cambridge played MUDs when they were there, left, and went, oh, let's make something a bit better than that. And they made this game called RuneScape. Fast forward kind of six years later, and they've got 11 million players, most of them under 19. Uh, about 2 million subscribers, I think paying, what is it, six quid, maybe? Something like that. Um, they're making about five million pounds a month. And, uh, and I said to them, wow. And they said, yeah, no, we're bathing in it. We don't know what to do with it. We put it all in the door, in a cupboard, and it just kind of <laughs> bulges out. And uh, so they're, they're kind of literally like, stop giving us money. So they're developing some new, very expensive games so that they can spend it. Now, when you go back to the television business, 95% of Channel 4's income pre Econ Apocalypse came from TV adverts. I don't know what the percentage is yet because the figures are still rolling in and the poor finance squirrels are all bashing away at it. But uh, only 5% of, of um, our income came from other sources. And often other sources are kind of, can be a bit peripheral, like, I don't know, book sales or something. Um, this is, these are big numbers right here, really giant numbers that actually start to kind of look like, <coughs> oh my God, that could sustain a business. So we have half an eye on it at this, at this stage. 
So those are the five things. So what we do, we um, look at teenagers, we divide them up and bag and tag them on a regular basis. We have a research team who go out and talk to a lot of teenagers a lot of the time and say, what are you then? And uh, they will self-describe themselves and then if you say, oh, okay, so you're emo, they go, no, no. Um, but you can basically group kids. And what's fabulous about this, actually, I've got this other slide, unfortunately, on my laptop, but there were something like 29 categories. These change, right? These are loose things just to give you an idea of somebody. You know, are they, this, are they a boy racer or are they an emo? You do get a good idea of what, what we're talking about. Um, indie went from skaters through to hipsters, through to emos, through to techies. And townies and chavs and street rats and clubbers were sort of mainstream. And then urban and get paid crew and blingers and boy racers were kind of urban. Indie made up half. Mainstream made up a quarter, which is awesome. <laughs> Goths rock. <laughs> um, so we look at the teens. Teen-centric topics never change, and they have to remain fresh. Sex, drugs, alcohol, relationships, mental health, physical health, careers and money. The reason they have to stay fresh is because if you try to give somebody sex education and they're wearing the wrong clothes from two years ago, they don't listen. And then we have zeitgeisty things, which just kind of come up. So the next year is mental health, because we didn't have anything about mental health and everyone's a bit stressed at the moment. And uh, science, science is a massive one. Now, science is a bit curriculum, but um, science, there's a crisis in science in, in the UK. Nobody's interested in it. And... Uh, Secondly, a crisis in science and girls. So of all the kids who do double science at GCSE and get an A plus or an A star or whatever it is, the highest, the highest uh, grade, 50% of the boys go and take a science A level, 18% of the girls. So it's not an intellectual problem, it's a cultural problem at this point. So one of the things we're going to try and do ongoing is just help change that slightly. This is um, Dr. Basil. He's got a PhD in quantum physics. Um, people like him will help us change the <laughs> <laughs> image of science. If you Google educational games, now I don't mean to pick on the BBC. I love the BBC. <coughs> worked there for five years. Very fond of it. Bless. Um, but if you Google educational games, the top result is the BBC, ignoring the paid one. And then there's kind of two or three brands you've never heard of. And if you go into schools games and you go to 11 to 16 year olds and I, I clicked on PSHE first, and there were no results. And I clicked on sort of citizenship, like no results, oh, bloody hell. So I clicked on history, there's got to be some history games, two results, kind of, kind of dull. Um, so educational games, not, not going to work. So what we're doing is um, entirely by stealth. We don't talk about educational games. We don't tell the teens that they're educational. We just tell them that they're great games. I go out there and I go to game conferences and I go and hang out with game indies and I go and talk to people who make games who know absolutely sort of all about education and I get them to make us games and learn as they're going about how to make an educational game. It's actually pretty simple. You just don't be a bastard and think about money. You think about what you're teaching. So we've got ten. Um, three, four, four are live now, one went live this week, and the rest are in development. So I'm going to run you through them quickly because they'll give us an idea of, uh, give you an idea of what we're doing. Bow Street Runner came out first, um, history game, but looks at the origin of the police force. Teens, police, not very good relationship, thought we'd make a game. So, <coughs> at the same time we thought we'd make a kind of televisual push flash to the limits game and uh, put it out in January. Everybody loved it. Um, had like a million plays overnight. Uh, not literally, but very quickly. Um, won a BAFTA, won a Learning on Screen Award, won a Beamer, all this kind of stuff. So everybody was like, oh, OK, yeah. It kind of looks like telly, but it's a game. We get it. Roots was the second one um, a couple of months later. This was expressly designed to get teens more interested in genes, genetic testing, DNA testing kits, all this kind of stuff. Traces of data, if you have your DNA tested or swabbed or whatever, that data is then owned by somebody and that is freaking terrifying. Because in 10 years time, they've got your whole thing. If that gets into an insurance company and they find out that you've got some kind of 
you know, distant but nevertheless important, uh, significant <coughs> likelihood of catching, getting, developing some kind of disease, then you can wave goodbye to insurance. Not that you need it in this country yet, but you can see where this is going. So it's important that kids understand this kind of stuff. So we made a big project that was a combination of TV and games. It was a documentary with a female uh, focus. There was a big alternate reality game that took a form of kind of interactive drama with a very sweet female lead and um, lots of little mini games. Um, stick it on a black background, win some PlayStation 3s, get the boys in. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it works. So uh, this was kind of, I think, week five, I think. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but um, the pages, films, facts, games, prizes, talk, that kind of thing. Games, home page, <laughs> somehow. Uh, and then the actual mini games, and then it kind of tails off. I think we're counting, at the moment, 21 million plays of the, of the mini games. <laughs> kind of 650,000 visits to the site, views, um, this again was taken quite early on, I don't think it says, but uh, we went and looked at the videos to kind of get an, uh, an idea of who's watching them and YouTube happily tells us that there's a female bias, 50% teen audience, 25% to channel4.com, so that was good. Uh, UK dominant, so we went to the pub because that was massive success as far as we were concerned. <coughs> 1066 is the third one, a little bit of an anomaly because again it's a history game and it was actually designed for kids um, because we are looking at going younger than 14 <coughs> and this was a classic military strategy game because obviously ten <coughs> there was a film 1066 which you put on the telly and what else would you do other than military strategy so we did military strategy with um, historically accurate taunting and swearing um, which went down an absolute treat. Five and a half million players to date. Um, the, one of the fascinating things about doing stuff on the internet is, of course, when you look at your audience, you, 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 get your, you go for your target audience, but you get this giant halo of everybody else. So there was a period uh, in which the Chinese were playing this game. They, was, they were playing it for less. So kids in the UK were playing it for like 25 minutes, and the Chinese kids were playing it for about 15, probably because of the language barrier. And we had this vision of, Chinese kids coming on, you know, school trips to England and calling people rumpfed chickens and the like. <laughs> so this is the fourth one that's gone live, Smokescreen, um, again web-based. Uh, this is a game designed for 14 to 16 year olds to basically teach them or, or just kind of illustrate all the weird and wonderful behaviours that happen on social networks where kids tend to get into trouble. Cyberbullying, phishing for data, uploading um, dodgy pictures, uh, having other people upload pictures, not being able to do anything about it, privacy <coughs> settings, that kind of stuff. So, um, again, referring to Ben's thing, how to understand what happens to your data. So that's live now. Um, the next game we're doing is a small and simple sex education game aimed squarely at teenage boys. So it's going to be a PC game and rude and funny. You're going to have a little captain and his lily-livered privates and you're going to go into teenagers' privates and fight what you find there. <laughs> 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 it actually should be hilarious. The guy who's doing it is um, completely brilliant and his last game, Time Gentleman Please, was very funny and got like 97% and uh, uh, he, he's, he's genuinely hilarious. So that's good. Um, uh, Polish Battle of Britain. So. Why are we doing this? Again, it's a history thing, but there's actually a lot of, um, you know, thanks to the Daily Mail and the like, antipathy in some areas of the country towards um, Poles. And a uh, little known fact, Ben will know it. <laughs> Which squadron was it, Ben? The, the Polish RAF squadron. It's got a number? 206? Three. Something like that. So, a squadron of Poles, um, the RAF were... Uh, rather upset by them because they didn't fly in formation, so this is clearly the English lot. Uh, the Poles did not fly in formation, they played chicken with the Germans and um, took down twice the number than the Brits did. Um, so that's going to examine that, that and have uh, authentic Polish swearing in it. <laughs> um, Black Trafalgar, Nelson's Navy had, I think, 22 different cultures 
and uh, races on board, and even some women. Not very many people know that. So again, in the kind of history plus cultural relations theme, we're going to do uh, another game there. The curfew is in development from the guys who did uh, Bow Street Runner for us. And this is a game about civil liberties. And this comes directly from data like this. This little middle finger shaped thing is um, a notice for the dispersal of groups and removal of persons under the age of 16 to their home address. This is a curfew in act in the UK right now in over a thousand towns and cities where if you are 16 or under and out, usually in the evening, but I think it's at any point, 24 hours, anyway, um, and you are in some way scaring somebody or annoying somebody or just suspected of potentially being able to blah, 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 the police can send you home. So uh, our game is set in the near future where there's a national curfew for teenagers and they're stuck indoors and what they do. Uh, game number nine, Ada and the Alien. This is a game specifically aimed at girls, again, but the kind of Sims crew. So it's going to be a PC and Mac game, adventure platformer, where set in the future where you are a female with this kind of cool alien that you can do experiments on. And um, you run around and through rummaging through the detritus of the apocalypse that has happened because nobody's listened to the eco message uh, enough. Um, you dig up history and you, you dig up stories of people like Ada Lovelace and Grace Hopper and famous women in science, again, to um, help create role models for girls. Last game in development, Cover Girl. Again, another big flash game. And this one is all about how every image you see in a magazine is usually a construct, um, especially in the beauty industry. It's Botox, it's um, airbrushing, lighting, whatever. So the game, uh, she's 44, by the way. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, so the game is all about airbrushing, adding cellulite, removing cellulite, shading between ribs for the skinny issue, you know, making people wider for the fat issue. And to, to really get kids to look at those pink and yellow <coughs> shocking gossip magazines of with women in bikinis on the beach with their bums hanging out and just to realise, just to understand how cynical and unpleasant they are and hopefully get kids airbrushing each other's photos, probably. <laughs> so to finish up, how do we measure success? A lot of people said, well, God, this is really, you know, this is all really new and interesting and wonderful, but, but what's the success? And because with telly, it was always a bit easy. You just looked at the numbers and everybody went, OK, that did quite well. Um, we have to do a kind of combination of things. We do look at numbers, but numbers are not everything. Uh, we look at the reception from the educational establishment and interested parties, so teachers, parents, people just kind of going, oh, did that work, did that not work? We look at uh, reception from peers, so awards, um, etc., and divide it by the amount it cost. So every project is different, but that's how we determine success. I'm, I, am, I can say that overall, uh, these games have so far been a stonking success for us. Going back to the old maybe 10% of 100,000, you know, 10,000 people at any time to two millions is brilliant. And that's me, 28 minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs>